Hey guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome to another Flutter tutorial video. Today we're going to be talking about building plugins in Flutter. In the last tutorial we talked about packages. Packages as we saw are pure Dart code, whereas with a plugin you're interfacing with the hosted platforms. In many cases it's both Android and iOS, and so you can choose Swift Objective-C for iOS, or you can choose Kotlin or Java for Android. Here on the screen I have a command to create a new plugin and I want to create a new template type plugin with the Android language Kotlin and the iOS language Swift and then the name of the plugin will just be called example plugin. Now I've already built the plugin here inside of IntelliJ. IntelliJ does provide an easy GUI method of creating a plugin. And this is the boilerplate that you'll get after you've built out a plugin. We have here the main plugin Dart file. So this is inside of this lib folder. And right here it's called example plugin.dart. Then we've got an entire example Dart application. So this is a Dart application like what we created in the last tutorial that automatically imports the plugin that we're working with. So if I open up the PubSpec YAML, you can see here that the example plugin is automatically imported through relative path. Also inside of the plugin, we have our Android folder, which has the source. In this case, it will be Kotlin source. So we have this example plugin Kotlin file. And if I open it up, you can see here we have some imports from a Flutter library. And then we have a class here with two different methods inside of it. On the iOS side, we have some Objective-C right here. And we could come in here and edit this as well. So for those of you who are looking for instructions on how to do most of this stuff inside of Objective-C or Swift, unfortunately, I do not have much knowledge on that subject. I will try to point out as much as I can, but this is mainly going to be an Android-based tutorial. Let's quickly walk through the boilerplate code that comes with the plugin. So right here is the Dart code. We bring in Dart async and we also bring in the Flutter services package. And we have a class here called example plugin. And this has a constant method channel called underscore channel. And this points towards a method channel with the string example plugin inside of it. Below this we have a getter which returns a future string. And this is static mind you. This getter gets the platform version from the platform. So if you launch this on Android, it will get the Android version that you're running on. And if you were to launch this on iOS, it would give you the iOS version that you're running on. The way that this communicates with Android or iOS is through this channel here, which is this method channel. The method channel sends in this string here and then inside of the Kotlin layer or the Android layer, we have this on method call and this on method call looks for this string, which is the string that we had in the Dart code and it matches that string and it says, okay, well, if we get this message from the Dart code, then return this line of code and we'll walk through what this is doing when we actually create our own code. In the objective C code, we also have an if else statement. So here we have this if statement, which says, okay, well, if we get this string here and it is equal to the call method, then we want to return a result. And this result will give us the current device system version information. Now, if we go inside the main.dart file in the example project that was created, you can see here we've just got a very basic project, builds out a stateful widget. And then inside of this stateful widget, we have this init platform state function, which is what is communicating with the plugin and ultimately the platform state. And all it's doing is asking for the platform version getter, which is attached to our example plugin. And then if it fails, it throws back a line that says it failed. Otherwise, it then calls set state and it sets it into a global variable here, which then prints it out to the screen in this text widget. So if I run this example project and put it into our emulator, you can see here in the middle of the screen, it tells us the Android version. So it says running on Android 7.1.1, which is the version that I'm using in my emulator. And if we were to run this in an iOS emulator, it would show us the corresponding iOS version as well. For those of you who are interested in the various different types and how they translate into Dart, 
there is this nice little piece of documentation that you can use as a reference. You can see here that we've passed back a string from both iOS and Android, and then it was converted into a Dart string. This shows you the types that you need to pass back to actually get in the Dart code. So if you're passing back some weird string type that isn't a java.lang.string or isn't an ns string, then it won't work as it should inside of Dart. So again, this is pretty useful and I will link it in the description for you guys to take a look at yourselves. All right, so now let's make our own getter function. So there's this getter function. It gets a string from Android and from iOS, and then it sends it over into our Flutter application. Let's create one that will also get a string from the platform, and we'll do it in a way that will be slightly different than what is being done in this example. For when we want to just get a primitive type of data from one of the platform layers, we just create a getter like was shown in this example here. So I've created one here which gets a string. Platform messages are asynchronous by default, so we need to wrap it inside of a future. And so I'm going to get random string, and this is an async call, and this can be a single line function. So we just await on channel invoke method and then we pass in the name of the method that we want to invoke as a string. So in this case I'm going to call our method random string and then when it gets invoked in the Kotlin layer or in the Objective C layer it does something specifically for us. So that we can work inside of the Android layer I've opened up the Android folder as its own project inside of IntelliJ. So inside of our main project, we have example plugin, and then we have Android here. This is the folder that I've opened inside of its own window. After Gradle finishes building the plugin, you'll notice that all of the imports from Flutter end up going away. And this is because it doesn't really know where to go to get the Flutter SDK for Android. To correct this, I will create a new folder inside of here called libs, and then I'll navigate to my Flutter SDK, bin, cache, artifacts, engine. And inside of engine, you have various different Android types. It doesn't really matter which one you get. I'm just going to grab Android x64. And you want to just grab the flutter.jar file. Just copy it and then paste it into this lib folder. Once it's in here, you can right click on it and you can click add as a library. And you just click OK. And you'll see here that all of those errors are now gone because now it's bringing flutter.jar in as a library. There is one more thing that we need to do, however, otherwise this will not build correctly. And that is hit F4 to open up the project structure window, come down to the flutter dependency here, and change the scope from compile to provided because this is just being provided by us and we already have another version of it in the Flutter SDK. So then we just hit apply and hit OK to close the window and now everything should work properly. Before we start writing any code here, let's inspect the code we have. So here we have our class example plugin which extends method call handler and then we have this companion object which has a function called register with. This is what essentially is registering our example plugin into the Android ecosystem. So here we're saying, okay, we want to create a new method channel where we're registering a messenger with the name example plugin. And then we're just saying channel set method call handler. And then we're passing in our example plugin object. Down here is where much of the logic for our current plugin occurs. So we have this on method call. And what it does is when we call a method from Dart, it sends the string in here inside of this method call right here. And we're saying, okay, if call.method equals get platform version, then we want to return a result where we're saying success. And then we return this string to the Dart layer. To make this a little bit more clear as to what it's doing, I'm just going to convert the if statements into a when block. So it's saying here, when call.method equals get platform version, then we want to call this result success and then send in our string. Inside of our Dart code, we specified that we wanted another method called random string. So now in here below where we have get platform version, we can just add this string 
random string. And then when call.method is this random string, we can just call result success and send back this string that says this is our random string. So now this getter will actually work and it will get the string that we just wrote inside of the Kotlin. And if we now go into our main.dart file, we can set this up so that it will actually use this method rather than the other method. Inside of this try block, I'll just say platform version equals await example plugin dot random string rather than dot get platform version. And then the rest of this logic should then automatically choose and print out the appropriate string. So it's saying running on, this is our random string. So this is a very basic way of getting data from the platform and then sending it to the Dart layer. And even without knowing much Objective-C, I can kind of walk through this and sort of understand what is going on inside of this Objective-C. So if I wanted to implement what we just created inside of the Kotlin, I could do this in here as well. So here's my Objective-C example. So we've got the first if statement, which checks for the method name get platform version. And then we've got this else if statement which checks for the platform method name random string is then we return a result with a new string in it that says this is our random string. One thing to keep in mind when you're building a plugin inside of Flutter is that you cannot just hot reload to see the changes. So if you edit anything inside of Android or anything inside of iOS, make sure you shut down the example and then restart it to recompile the changes. All right, so now we have these two getters. These allow us to get information from Android every single time we invoke them. Now let's make it so that we can get information that's being pushed from Android. So we create a function here. I'm gonna call this function call timer, and inside of it we'll have a callback function, which will return a future with dynamic type inside of it. It will be called callback, and we'll put in a method call. This method call is like one of these strings. So we have to pass in the specific string that we want to call in the platform. And then what this does is it will call this set method call handler with our callback function inside of it, which will communicate with the platform for us. Inside of our Kotlin layer, we can set up the logic that we want to actually push to the Dart layer. And I'm just going to make it so that we have a small little timer that pushes integers back to the Dart layer. So first we'll create a variable called x, which we'll set to zero. Then we'll create a timer object and we'll put it inside of a val. So this will be immutable. And for this, we wanna import java.utils. With this timer, we want to call schedule at fixed rate, and this will allow us to run a function over and over and over again at a fixed amount of time. For our example, we want this timer task, which is the task that we're going to perform at this interval, to perform at a delay of zero, meaning it starts immediately, and then it calls back every single second. So we put in the amount of milliseconds that we want. In this case, I'm putting in a thousand, which corresponds to one single second. Inside of this timer task object, we need to override the run method, and this is the part of the timer task that gets run every single time the period comes up. And to have this work, we want to grab our channel, which is our method channel up here. And then we wanna call invoke method on it, pass in the method string type that we want to call from the Dart layer, which in this case will have be call timer, and then perform the action that we want to perform. In this case, we're taking X and we're incrementing it. So essentially when we call from the Dart layer to call timer, we'll be able to get this integer and we'll be able to put it inside of our application. So now inside of our example project, I'm going to change the structure of our widgets. And what I'll do is I'll add a floating action button. This will have an empty unpressed, and then we'll have a child, which will be icons.timer. Inside of this unpressed, we'll actually call 
our invoke method so that we can get the integer and then display it inside of our text widget. Up at the top of our myAppState class, I can create an integer called timerValue and set it equal to zero. And then inside of the onPressed function, we can call examplePlugin.callTimer and then put in our callback function. For our callback function, what we'll do is we'll just pass in a method call and then we can call setState and then take the call.arguments, which is the integer that we're passing back and push it into our timer value. So now we can come into this text widget and just replace the rest of it with our timer value as a string. That way we can see it incrementing as it goes after we push the button. This call arguments value corresponds with the type that we're passing back from the platform. In that document that I showed earlier that had all the different types and how they correspond with the Dart types, you just have to keep that in mind when you're passing back a type. So if we were passing back a boolean, then the boolean would be in call.arguments. If we were passing back a list, then we could again access that list through call.arguments and so on and so forth. And before I run this example, I did forget to put a little if statement here. So we only want this set state to run if the method from the call method is call timer. So this is the method that we set up inside of the Kotlin file. So this method corresponds with the call argument being an integer and that integer being incremented by the Android platform. Now, because we only have the one method, this wouldn't throw an error, but if you did have multiple methods, you would want to specify the exact method that you want inside of your application. All right, so here is our application inside of our emulator. When I click the button here, this should start to increment upwards as it is. And you can see here it's incrementing from 20 to 27, 28, 29, 30, etc. And it'll just keep going and going and going. So this is literally how every single plugin that brings in something from an Android API or an iOS API works. You essentially just create a activity of sorts inside of your plugin, and then you create a small little API that allows you to pass data to and from the Dart layer. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike this tutorial, then by all means, download it as much as you like. Have a good night.